that whoever believes in him You should not. So in other words, guess what he's telling you? You got a decision to make. You got, if you don't believe in the only begotten son, then guess what? He tells you that you're going to perish. He says, you should not perish. He says, but have everlasting life. I, I want us to look at that should not. I know some versions say shall not, but I want to stick with should not. But in other words, you should not go to hell if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You should not go to hell if you if you trusted Jesus Christ as your and you received Him as your Lord and Savior and you trust Him, then you should not. But if you don't, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. uh, there's something awaiting. Mm -hmm. But I love the message version of John chapter three, verse sixteen through eighteen. Look what it says. Because the message version breaks it down. He says like this. This is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why. Why did God give his son? Not because you and I were so good. He said that so no one need to be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. God didn't go to all that trouble of sending his son to merely point out an accusing finger telling the world how bad it was. He came to help. Anybody need help? Help you. Mm -hmm. To put the world right again. Yeah. But God says today I want to Seeing death in the grave and see, was seen by his disciples. Anyone who refuses to trust him has long since been under death. Mm -hmm. Sentenced without knowing it. And why? Because of that person. Because of your failure to believe. son because you fail to believe he says hell awaits you mm -hmm. oh, he says you fail to believe when it was introduced to you Let, let's go to John chapter 3 16 8. it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And what is this world? What is this world and what does this world consist of? The world is the earth. And it consists of God's creation. And everything that God made. Human and natural features. So God loved every, every person. And right. everything that he created. God loves you. Amen. For God so loved you. Everything. You are included. In, in, in the true church. You are included. Because God loves you. He said, if you don't believe that I created the earth. Because he says there's some things out there, some ideologies and some, some teaching out there that's going to make you believe that this earth came to pass because of a, a big bang. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you don't believe, I know what the world is saying, but if you believe that I, if you don't, if you have any questions, he says, I challenge you to go to Genesis 1. See, see, when you know who you are and who you serve and what he's done, 
when the false teachings start coming around. Created the heavens and the earth. Before there were scientists, I am. And I was. You know, Genesis means what? The origin. He said, go to the beginning and you'll discover what I you know what I created. Now, I'm going to let you know something, church. I want you to understand that there are some false people out there that's going to try to talk you out of what I've done. To not only read, but believe and defend the word of God. Why is it important? Especially when it comes to understanding, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. and teach that God the Father loves some people more than others. These same people think that God's love for them is greater than it is for you because of the color of your skin, the content of your character, the job you have, or the job you don't have. Whether you're sitting in the valley or sitting in here, some people have you believe that God loves them more than he loves you. God's love goes beyond socioeconomic status. God says it goes beyond all of those things that you love how when you stop doing the things that I like, I cut you off. Yeah. I heard you start acting all, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's right. And you are a testimony, yeah. Yeah. Pastor Mark, that I love my enemies. Because at once, one time, you were my enemy. Uh -huh. You served the prince of darkness. Yeah. Everything about your heart was deceit, yeah. selfishness, yeah. pride, and greed. Yeah. You were my enemy, Mark. Yeah. But because of what? Forgiveness. Love. 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 You are now my right. child. I need you to pick up these 66 books so you can see that I love you even when my parents and my friends and my co-workers and everybody else disown me. Father God, I know that your love is unconditional. But he says here that I extend this love even to my enemies. Go to Matthew chapter 5. We're just going to teach a little bit. Have it is up here on the screen. It's hard for me to love my enemy. He said, then you don't know who you are. Then. He says here, he says, bless those. Yeah. 
and persecute you. He said, because once you become my child, yeah. the only thing I'm passing down to you is some grace, yeah. some truth, and some forgiveness, right. and a whole lot of love. Mm. But, but he says, but some of us want to use that excuse that what? I'm only my father's child. Mm. My, my, my. That's why he said in the scripture that what? He said that, that you may be sons of your father in heaven. He said, for he makes his son rise on the what? Yeah. Evil mm. and on the good. And sends rain on what? The just and the unjust. You see this real love that God is talking about that the world needs to know? That his world, his love is not just for us believers. Because we want it all, though. We want to be blessed. We want to be loved. We want to increase. We want territory in the Lord. We want him. And God said, hold on, you listen to the whole point. This love that I have is not for you, it's for the entire world. And how are they going to see it if you don't show them love? Love. Go to Romans chapter 5. Amen. Go to Romans chapter 5. Starting at verse 6. Mm-hmm. And you're going to see the scripture again as we move forward. Romans chapter 5, verse 6 says it like this. For when we were yet without strength, yeah, Lord. in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Yeah. He says, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. Yes, sir. I'm going to stop in verse 8 because we love that but God. But God. And you know what? Have you, have you been there? In the midst of when you didn't think you were loved. Yes, in the midst of when everybody turned up, when everything was against you. Yeah. When you looked in the mirror and you didn't like what you see because you saw something that you didn't love. God said, there's a but God. Yeah. He says, but God committed his love toward who? Us. You see, he didn't just say, he didn't just say, mm. He didn't just say, uh, yeah. He said, God committed his love unto who? Us, the entire world. Not this color. Not that color. Not that smart person or dumb person. The lame person or the walking person. The rich person or the poor person. No, no, that's, that's the God of this world. He said, no, he said, he committed toward what? All of us. And if you don't leave here today knowing that you love, it ain't my fault. Right. You better yeah. drop your low self-esteem at the altar and know that God loves you. Yeah. And if God loves you, no matter what you're going through, God is not done yet. Yeah. Why? Because he loves you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you don't accept that love, that's on you. Right. Look what he says here. But verse 8 says, but God committed his love toward us and that we were, while we were yet sinners, Guess who died for us? Christ died for us. Amen. And he says here, he says here, it says, the ultimate sign of love is to lay down one's life for others. Christ gave the supreme example of this kind of love by giving his own life on behalf of the sins of the world. That's John 3.16. He said, Pastor, yeah, just 3.16 verse, that part A of it. For God so loved the world as everyone mm-hmm. that he did what he gave his only begotten son. He sacrificed. Yeah. Not because you were so good and not long how, because how long you've been a Christian and stuff. He said, look, he said, I love you because that's all I know. Yeah. It's the love. But I'm letting you know if you reject my love, mm-hmm. something awaits you. Mm-hmm. Look at John 3.16b. We're still in John 3.16. Mm-hmm. He says that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. So who is the recipient of the gift of God's love? All of us. All of us. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He says that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And who is the recipient of the gift of God's love? 
It is for what? Whosoever. Mm -hmm. Or my scripture says, whoever. Mm -hmm. For it says, whoever believes in him should not perish, but shall have what? Everlasting life. And who, whosoever includes, guess whosoever includes? The black man? The white man? The yellow man? The red man? Whosoever includes the poor man? The rich man? The gay man? The straight man? The liar? The thief? The murderer? The adulterer? The backbiter, the gossiper, the idolater, the abuser, the fornicator, the Jew, and the Gentile. Or anybody who confess and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, so stop separating my love. I love everyone. Everyone has the same privilege and right to receive my son. He says, Whoever, whosoever, man, y'all better get this real love. Because we're living in a time where people want to, you, you ever love somebody that love you? Isn't that easy? God said, let me tell you something. I love y'all when y'all don't love me. He says here, look what he says. He says, whosoever believeth on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Yes, God loves us. But... Mm. Yes, God loves us, but his love for us will not negate that our God is holy, just, and right. Can I say that again? Yes, God loves us. Yes, God loves you. But his love for us will not negate that we serve a holy God. Amen. Yeah. That we serve a righteous God. Yeah. That we serve a just God. Yeah. His love for us mm -hmm. does not give us a license <laughs> to live in open rebellion right. to his word. Oh, May I say it again for you? His love for us yeah. does not give us a license. Yeah. I'll make it plain for you. What kind of marriage would you have? Come on. Come on. Come on. Say it. Say it. Come on. Say it. <laughs> if you could never trust mm -hmm. the person you was married to. Mm -hmm. How long would that marriage last if that person would always sneak out? Mm -hmm. and go after mm -hmm. something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. How, long? Yeah. How long would they stay mm -hmm. if they had a pattern? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to yeah. say that up for somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. If there's a pattern of unfaithfulness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A pattern meaning this person got the I can't help it. Mm. I know. <laughs> God has restored us and we, we've been forgiven, him, but yet still I got the I can't help it. I just got to do me, mm. the flesh said. Mm. Your marriage is not going to last. Mm. Who wants someone? They may be fine. They may be beautiful. But who wants someone that can't keep a promise? We can stay together, but your word can't be trusted. Who wants a relationship like that? Wow. It was one time wavy, right? My young people, he said, yeah, Pastor, I remember you had them wavy. It's going to fall out. Your, your muscles are going to sag. Your back is going to ache. Your steps are going to get slow. In layman terms, those looks are going to fade. And if you're loving for the looks, you in some dangerous territory. And God says, I don't love like the world loves. The world is always loving from the outside. Yeah. He's fine and she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But God says, I look at the heart. Yeah. I look at what really matters. Because you can say you love me, but your actions. Yeah. Mm. So who has to, whosoever, whoever includes all these people. And we said that God's love 
for us doesn't give us a license to do what? Whatever we want to do. Anything we want. He doesn't give us that license to just freely rebel against him. I told you what kind of marriage relationship you had if that if that was it wouldn't last long. Thank God he don't do prenups. <laughs> Thank God that his love for us is unmerited. Thank you, Lord. Let's look at 13. Look at John chapter 3, verse 16, B again. I'm not done with John 3, 16. He says that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Somebody read, read internal life, right? Mm -hmm. Internal life does not only mean life without end, although that is one part of it. It refers to entering into a personal relationship with the living God as his son. Yeah. John 17, 3 says, this is the eternal life that, that they may have, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Mm -hmm. Eternal life with God in heaven will be perfect life without any of sin's consequences. Yeah. It will be an abundant life. And why am I not experiencing abundant life? Probably because you have yet to realize how much God loves you. You allow the enemy to keep stuff around your neck that God has already forgiven you. You allow people to keep you in bondage to what God has already forgiven you. God said through his only begotten son on the cross, it is finished. I have done everything I need to do. You have to make up your mind that what I've done is enough for you. He says that when you believe that, you will have eternal life, a bright life. He says it will be fullness of joy and pleasure forever. It begins the moment, this abundant life, this new life. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. I don't know about anybody else, but, but this life that I live ain't, that in the natural, it ain't good. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not good, y'all. Mm -hmm. It's not good, young people. It's not, this is not it. I know that's what the world tell you. But this is not it. If this was all life had to offer, we would be most miserable. But the world will make you believe that this is all, no, this ain't it. God said, let me tell you something. I've prepared a place for those that have confessed me. And I love it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, but you can't come to me unless my father sent he says here, he says, it's abundant life. And it begins the moment you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. But it gets infinitely better when you go to be with him. Mm -hmm. And you say, what do you mean, Pastor? We talked about this before for those that have gone on before us. Those that have known that know Christ without a shadow of doubt. You've been on their death. You've been with them on their deathbed. Have you been? Am I the only one? You've been with them that said, look, stop praying for me. This pain is too much for me to bear. My father has given me a glimpse yes, sir. Yes, sir. of what is to come. Yes, sir. He showed me because I am his child. Yeah. I know you're going to miss me. Yeah. But he's given me a glimpse of what's to come. A he's given me a sweet rest. Yes, sir. Don't you know that I'm in torture here? Oh, Lord. We're talking about abundant living. Yes, sir. He said, in this life that to come, and this life that he's promised me, I don't have to take any medication. Mm -hmm. I got to get no more shots. Yeah. I got to go through no more chemo. Yeah. I got to go through any of that. This life that he's given me, he says, I'll have sweet rest. Yeah. He says, let me tell you something. And my desire mm -hmm. is that you too mm -hmm. get a glimpse. That's right. As we learn in Bible study, a peekaboo of what God will show you and show those that he loves. Sweet rest. Look what he says here. He says, now I'm presenting this good news to you, this real love. Why? See, we always think we're, we're undeserving. You know what? You're not. And I'm not either. But God loves us so much. Real love says it like this. Go to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 through 9. Let me show you what real love looks like. What does real love say, tells me? What does real love say to me? Real love. 
Second Peter chapter three verse eight nine says, "But beloved, mm -hmm. don't forget this one thing: mm -hmm. that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, mm -hmm. and a thousand years as one day." Yeah. He's, look what he says, people of God. He says, "The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, mm -hmm. as some count slackness, mm -hmm. but He is long suffering toward us, yes. not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to what." God doesn't want you to go to hell. God says, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not slacking son of my problem. You know, my problem. Guess what God says? He's telling somebody today, I'm waiting on you. That's the loving God. I'm waiting on you. God loves you so much. He's already got you on that. He said, I'm waiting on you. He said, let me tell you something. You can't come in as a group. You, you can't come as a team. He said, I'm Started for them, but you know, misery loves company. Yeah. I want you to be miserable. I, I talk about this all the time, brother. You can have. <laughs> have, you, have you ever been that person? You have to be wise in this. And let me talk it. You gotta be careful when you ask somebody, How are you doing? You gotta be led to ask that question. Because when you're led to ask that question, then you'll be ready to do what? Give them what they need. But he says here in the scripture, he says, 2 Peter chapter 3, 8, 9, he says in verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us. Don't you hear it in your children? Don't you hear it in the parents? If God is real, why is this happening? What is taking him so long? Why is all this stuff happening? God says, I, I am steadying my son from coming to get y'all. Yeah. Because I, I want you to come to me. Yeah. I love the message version. The message version of 2 Peter 3, 8, 9 says it like this. Don't overlook the obvious. With God, one day is a good, as good as a thousand years. A thousand years as a day. He says, God isn't late with his promise. Somebody need to hear that right now. God isn't late with his promise. It, what, what they say, delay don't mean denial. Now we say it with the, with, 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 with the coming of Christ. God says, I ain't late. So, some of the saints have said, Lord, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, Lord, Lord said, no, hold on for a minute. Mm -hmm. then, don't we see it in the scripture in Revelations mm -hmm. that the people that were underneath the throne of God was waiting for God to take revenge on those that persecuted them? Mm -hmm. God said, not right now. He told the, he told the saints to get them their robes. Because Mark is coming. If God sent Christ before I came in, don't you know that I would be damned? But his loving grace and mercy, he's waiting on you to come to him. account. In other words, you ever been that person just holding back some stuff? You know God let you see some things mm -hmm. and see some people because you know he'll let you do it right. And not the people, it's the spirit within the person. Yeah. Yeah. He'll let you see him. He'll show you that spirit within that person and you want to expose it. But the Lord said, no, not right now. Because that's not what I, where I showed that. I showed, I showed it to you so you can pray for me. Because yeah. guess what? I know they did something to hurt you. And I know that they yeah. said some things to get you. But guess what? I still want them saved. Because yeah. you read in John 3.16 yeah. that I love them so much that I sent my only God the son to die for. He said, I want them saved too. I'm just showing it to you so you can do what? Pray for me. Yeah. Yeah. He says, pray for those that do what? Despitefully use me. Persecute. 
See all kind of men. I'm going to strengthen somebody in the faith right now. Somebody talking about you right now. And right now, they lying on you right now. They plotting on you right now. Right now, right now. So let's move on. Don't be surprised that it happened because the Lord is telling you it's going to happen. He says he is restraining himself on the account of you, holding back the end or wrath because he doesn't want anyone lost. He's giving everyone space. Anybody like this space? God is giving you space to do what? To change. Yeah. Yeah. He's giving you space and time to do what? Change. Yes. Life is. And God says, I'm giving you some space and time to do what? Change. For on that great day, you're going to stand before me. And you're going to come with all these excuses on why you didn't accept me. You know how they blame the pastor. For their issues. They'll blame the praise team. That they didn't massage them into heaven. They'll, they'll, blame, they'll blame the officers. For not meeting their need. They'll blame, blame, blame. But they'll never look at themselves. Amen. God is saying, I'm waiting on you. I'm giving you some time and space that you may change. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in John chapter 3, verse 16, and that's what we're stopping at. I know we read to 18, we'll get there. But in John 3, 16, we learned something out of that one verse, didn't we? Isn't that a beautiful thing? We, we've learned in John 3.16 what, what, what was God revealing to us in John 3.16. He revealed to us that God is love. Amen. That God is love. He revealed to us the, the object of God's love. Who is the object of God's love? Look in the mirror. You are. It, 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 don't, don't wait for somebody else to tell you they love you. That's good. But guess what God is telling you today? The Almighty, the Creator of the world. That I love you. And God's love is unconditional, Brother Deacon. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, and I'm, I'm in the house. People are always trying to get you to do something. To prove your love. For them. People will say, if you love me, you do that. And they don't even give you some tidbits of how much they quote unquote love you just debate you. God doesn't work like that. God says, I love you no matter what. You are love. He says here, John 3.16 revealed to us this morning that it reveals God's love. It revealed the object of God. You, you got to know that you're love. Let me help somebody out. When you know that you're love, you have to worry about telling, trying to make somebody believe you're a man. That's right. Or I'm necessary. That's right. you, when, you know, when you're love, you got to worry about I'm, I'm this. No, no. You, you, don't fall, you don't fall away from grace and truth. You got to know who you are, whether people say it or not. Who he is? You got to know who he is. Look what he says here. It revealed what? The recipient of the gift of God's love. Yeah. Who is the recipient? You are. Yeah. And then it also revealed what? The consequence. Yeah, that's right. Don't you know there's a consequence, people of God? Yeah. When we reject God's love? That's right. It's a consequence. When we reject God's love, it's a consequence. And what is this consequence? I'm glad you asked. The scripture says that you will perish. And you know what perish means? Perish means that you will God's love. He says you will perish. It says God's love for us caused the greatest mystery and most incredible miracle of all time. 
Guess what it did? Christ died for us. But just knowing that, because you know, you met a lot of people that just say, I know Christ. You have a lot of people that confess Christ, don't you? I know the Lord, that, that's to shut you down. Yeah, don't you know that's how it works, right? Hey, can I tell you, I know the Lord. Let me tell you something. Just knowing these things about John 3, 6, 16 is not enough. To know that God loves you. To know that he sent his only begotten son to die for you. To know that in this, you should not perish. That's not enough. We must believe and obey what it says. And what does it say? I'm glad you asked. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. To be saved and receive eternal life, we must believe on the only begotten Son of God, which is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That's the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Can I say it again? Yeah. To be saved and receive eternal life, we must believe on the only begotten Son of God, which is Christ Jesus. I know you got a lot of voices out there telling you that there's more than one way to God. Mm. And shame on you for listening to the conversations. Mm. Now I'm talking about those that confess Christ Jesus. Mm. There's some conversations people of God, we shouldn't entertain. Right. If a person asks you some things that you know is not great, Paul said like this, avoid those uh, vain teachings and those genealogies. You know, it's some conversation we shouldn't be having because Satan is slick. You think you know something. You don't know nothing. You don't believe me? Ask Eve. The enemy knows you don't know anything. But because you desire wisdom and you want to know stuff, you get yourself involved in conversations that God is telling you to avoid. And now these people will start telling you that there is more than one way to the Father. And you embrace that falsehood. He's telling us here to be saved and receive eternal life. We must believe on the only begotten Son of God, which is Jesus Christ our Lord. Why? He died on the cross for our sins. And he rose again from the dead with all power in his hands. And if we repent and believe, we shall receive Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and we will be saved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who wants to receive real love today? Who wants to receive real love today? Go to Romans, back to Romans chapter 10, verse 8 through 10. I don't need you to come down the aisle. The Spirit of God is already moving on the hearts of those that rebelled against Him before they heard this message. Yeah. Romans 10, chapter 8 through 10 says, But what does it say? The word is near you, mm -hmm. in your mouth and where? In your heart. Yeah. Salvation is a change of heart. Yeah. It's a heart issue. That's right. It's a heart issue. He says, That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be what? Saved. Not you might be. Not that you're on your way to be. Not that you're halfway. Not that you're three quarters way. He says, but you are all the way saved. He says, verse 10 like this, he says, for with the mouth, for with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation. Guess how the message version says that? The message version says of Romans 10, 8 through 10, it says, so what exactly was Moses saying? The word that saves is right here. You haven't heard it already. Without the fluff, without the drum, the guitars, and the backup choir. That's right. He said, you heard the word of God. The word that saves is right here, as near the tongue in your mouth. How close is your tongue in your mouth? He said the word is right there. He said as close as the heart is in your chest. Mm -hmm. The word is right there. He said it's right for us. Mm -hmm. This is the core of our preaching. Say the welcoming word to God. Jesus is my master. Mm -hmm. Embracing body and soul. God's work of doing in us what he did in raising Jesus Christ from the dead. That's it. He says, you're not doing anything. 
Some of us think we got to do something, don't we? Mm-hmm. The word of God tells us all you have to do is what? Romans 10, 8, 10, and 9. He said that the word is near you in your mouth, in your heart, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But before I close today, we talked about real love. But before I close, I just want to let someone know in the house right now. Because somebody needs to know that God loves you. Somebody needs to know that God loves you. Somebody needs to know that God, the creator of heaven and earth, loves you. So much more than you could ever relate or understand. No matter what's going on in your life this morning, no matter what challenges, circumstances, hurts, setbacks, setups, disappointments, struggles, abuse, neglect, or loss that come to us, no matter how much pain they burn in your heart, no matter how many treasures of love, hope, blessings, and even people we've lost, no matter what's going on in your life, Somebody needs to know that God cares for you. And his care for you is and love for you is deep. It's passionate. And the good news is that it's everlasting. And if you happen to forget or miss some of the things that you heard this morning, I pray that you remember this. God is for you. Can I tell somebody that? If you don't catch anything else, God is for you. He's not against you. I know the world will tell you that this this, this 66 books, this, this letter from God is a hate message. They'll tell you that. And they'll try to twist this John 3.16 to fit their own twisted view. Right, right, right. But let me tell you something. This is a love letter. Yes, yeah. God loves you so much that guess what? He sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, to do what? Die for you. He says it like this. Somebody need to know that God is your helper. Mm -hmm. God is your friend. God is your healer and your rescuer. Some of us need to be rescued though. God says, I'm here. Come unto me. God is your peace. You've been searching for peace everywhere else. As a matter of fact, the world will make you believe that they have peace. And we'll pursue the world's peace. But God says, this peace that I have. This peace that I have is for you. Do you want peace today? He says, then invite me in. And if you want a mind already, if you want peace today, then trust what I've told you in my word. Whatever bad or hurtful event that has happened or will happen in your life, God can and will turn it around for your good. And he turns it around for our good. He loves us with all his heart. He died for us. He did it and he did it not because of your ethnicity. I'm going back to that. Not because of your socioeconomic status. Not because of your education. None of those. God loves us. Because he's love. And it's because of his love. Which is real love. That he has for us. Real love. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this day. We thank you for your word today that got so close to us, Lord God. You said it's closer than the tongue that's in our mouth. It's closer than the heart within our chest. Now, Lord God, I pray as your Holy Spirit works on the hearts of those right now, I pray, Lord God, that doubt would flee in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that discouragement will flee 
Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that defeat will flee in the name of Jesus Christ. And that someone would say yes to you. That's all that matters. That is our mission. To preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And even in the midst of everything that we may be facing, you told us, Lord God, that your love is not the love of, like the love of the world. It's not conditional. It's not based upon what I do or don't do. Your love is unconditional. And you told us today, Lord God, that we heard your word. And if we reject your word, you told us the consequences of rejecting real love. But I pray for mercy upon that soul that's sitting here today that has still yet to believe that you are who you say you are. I pray, Lord God, that your grace and truth will follow them throughout this day, this week, and when the Spirit of God convicts them, that they will say yes to you. I pray for those that are viewing on Facebook. That soul that said, yes, Lord, I believe. That soul that has invited Jesus Christ into their life. That soul that has surrendered their life unto Christ and believed that God sent his only begotten son. Not only to die for the sin of the world, but to overcome death, sin, and the grave. And not only that, but with the same power that lives in him that rose him from the grave. And now that he is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf, they have it too. By their faith. I thank you, Father God, that you've taught us today that salvation begins with faith and ends with faith. Increase your children's faith today in this hour. That in those times that they get weary, that they get worn, that they get, dis dis get discouraged, remind them, Lord God, that you are for them. And if you're for them, it's more than the whole world against them. We thank you, Father God, today we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you for the authority. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. That helps somebody. It helps somebody to know the truth. Give me a little music there. Sound man, just a little bit as we prepare our hearts, amen, for offering time. That's a good song, too, especially after this message. We can turn it up a little bit, Jonathan, just a little bit more because somebody need to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. When 